In your kit, you will find eight strips of light colored fabric and eight strips of dark colored fabric. If you have other fabric that you want to add to it, you are certainly welcome to. I kept it down to eight just to maintain my sanity. From those strips, on the darks, you're going to cut one and a half inch pieces from the width. So this was the width and I was just chopping off one and a half inch pieces. You should be able to get five from each of the dark ones. From the lights, the pattern calls for one and a quarter squares. I actually gave you two and a half inch strips. So if you want to cut two and a half inch squares, that's fine. You're going to be trimming down later anyway. So from those strips, you have enough to get four of the squares. Once you have cut your squares, then you can just cut them in half on the diagonal. You don't have to do this when you're doing paper piecing, but it will just make life a little bit easier. Your pattern has the um, foundations for your paper piecing. I strongly recommend that you copy these onto some other paper rather than ruining your uh, master pattern. There are going to be five strips. Um, when you go to copy them, if you're using a copier, you should always copy from your original because if you copy from your copies, then you may get distortions and your strips may not come out the same size. I'm going to show you two different methods of paper piecing. On the first, you're going to need a foundation. I'm using the Carol Dokes foundation paper. You can certainly use just regular copy paper if you want to, but the nice thing about the foundation papers that are made for that is they will tear away easier. You're going to have to do more than one copy to get the whole thing since it's a big piece of paper. I have copied part of my foundations here onto my foundation paper and I'm going to cut them apart so that I'm just working with one strip at a time. Now when I say I trimmed down my foundation, I left the seam allowance all the way around the edge. Um, I have also already cut all my pieces and set them next to the sewing machine so that I don't have to stop and do that later. On the foundation you'll see that it's numbered and that's the order that you're putting your fabric pieces down. So number one is going to be a goose or the dark fabric. So pick whichever one you want, doesn't matter which color. Um, you will actually have four extra goose pieces if you cut them at one and a half inches so you can play with it a little bit. We're going to place the fabric on the back side You'll notice when you hold up the foundation paper, you can see through to the other side. We're going to place it, the first piece is going to go wrong side down against the paper. And in this case, I want this first one to line up with the bottom edge so that I have a seam allowance. Now you could put a little spot of glue to hold it in place, or you can use a pen. I'm going to just go ahead and pin it. And you can flip it over, fold it on the line. And this is a little bit different than what the um, directions in the pattern talk about. And I can trim leaving a quarter of an inch right there. So there I've trimmed that first piece and I will show you trimming eventually. That is not absolutely necessary, but it makes it a little bit easier for placing your next piece. So number two is going to be one of the light colors. In this case, it's on this side. And I just want to line up, since I've pre-cut all these pieces, my long diagonal edge with that diagonal edge. And I'll pin it back again. And then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and sew on the line. I want to start a little bit before and end a little bit after where the line starts forgot to say it's right sides together here other than your very first piece which goes wrong side down against the paper all the rest of them are going to go right sides down against the paper okay. at the sewing machine I have shortened my stitch length and I chose 1.5 regular on this machine is 2.5 that's the default setting I like an open toe foot when I'm doing paper piecing so that I can see where I'm going you don't want to use a super fine needle. I think I have a size 80 in the machine. I'm going to take my foundation piece, paper side up, and I want to start before the line just a little bit. 
And I'm just going to stitch on that drawn line and I'm going to go just a little bit beyond where it stops. And that's my first seam. My next step is to trim that seam to a quarter of an inch. I like to keep a small cutting surface and pressing surface right next to the ironing board so I'm not having to jump up and run back and forth. I'm doing this a little bit different than what she said in the pattern. I'm going to fold back on my stitching line and I'm showing you today the add a quarter ruler. It comes in two different sizes. One is 12 inches long and one is 6 inches long. The nice thing about it is it has a built-in groove right here that hugs the edge of your foundation or you can use it with templates as well. So all I have to do is put it on my foundation and that groove will lock right in there on my paper and just trim and I have my perfect quarter inch every time. I also mentioned I keep a pressing surface right next to the sewing machine and I like to just keep a little iron hot sitting right there as well. So I'm going to press piece number two away from piece number one and I'm not sure I've had the iron on long enough. And then my next step is we've done one and two so now I'm going to add number three. Again I can line it up here. If you're unsure when you're doing foundation piecing our pieces are plenty big enough it's not going to be an issue. You can always hold it up to the light to make sure that you're actually covering and you can fold the piece back on roughly the quarter inch line and I can see, I don't know if you can't, no, obviously you can't on the camera since I have it out of the way. I can see that my fabric's way up here so I have plenty to cover. You can pin if you want to and back to the sewing machine to sew on that line again. I didn't pin, I'm living dangerously. Um, if you choose to do that, sometimes you pay for it. Again, I'm starting right, I'm starting a few stitches before the beginning of the line. Sewing on the line and then off the edge where the line stops. Here's my second piece. I'm going to trim, and I'll show you that one more time, my seam allowance, and press. So again, I take it, and I want to fold it on my stitching line, and this time, those stitches that went over the edge are going to stop me, so you're going to just want to tear them away. Fold on your stitching line. I'm using the add a quarter, if you don't have a quarter, add a quarter or don't choose to invest in one you can just use another ruler and line up your quarter inch right there. The add a quarter is really nice because it grips and keeps from sliding. So there's that piece. I'm ready to press that one. So I have pressed and now you'll notice my top edge is a little bit raggedy so it's going to be hard to match up my next piece. So again, I can fold on the stitching line. I haven't stitched there yet. And if you want to make your life easier, you can fold on all these lines before you ever start sewing on your foundation. I'm going to fold. And again with the add a quarter. Cut it off. And now I have a nice straight edge up at the top to put my next piece down on. Again, you can pick whichever pieces you want for your geese. There is no right or wrong order. I will just line that up with that cut edge. Put a pin or two in it if you like. I'm going to flip it over and sew on the line that's between three and four. It's also between two and four. You may notice I'm sewing on a different line than what I told you. My battery ran out in the middle of sewing the last line. But I'm still sewing a goose unit onto the top of a previous one. So again, it's just on the line, starting a few stitches before and ending a few stitches after. And I flip it up, press, and just keep right on going. Okay, I want to get that quarter inch again, so I'm going to fold on my stitching line where I haven't stitched yet. 
A little tip if you're having a hard time getting exactly on that stitching line, you can use an index card or anything else that's about cardstock weight. Put it on the line and fold back on it. And you can put your add a quarter down. Same thing on the other side. You can use your index card or any other card stock weight. Fold back on the line. Add a quarter. Cut. And I'm ready to add on my outside triangles again. And you're just going to keep repeating that process until you have the whole strip sewn. This is the four unit flying geese piece. Um, and all my stitching is done, so now I need to trim it down. I'm going to flip it over. This time I'm using a regular ruler. And I like to line up my quarter inch line on the stitching line and then cut. Now the pattern does tell you what size these units should be when you finish, so you may want to double check in case you're copy or distorted them slightly. This unit is supposed to measure two and a half inches wide by four and a half inches high. So let's just double check it. And yeah, I will have two and a half inches if I just cut a quarter of an inch away from my stitching line on these. So again, a quarter inch. Cut. And this bottom one should be pretty straight already because I was lining up the bottom of the fabric with the edge of the foundation. And then I do want to check to make sure this is going to be four and a half inches. And it is. Just cut from there. So there is my pretty much perfect flying geese unit. The next step is to remove the paper. And with the foundation paper, it should tear away pretty easy. If you're having trouble with it, you can um, run a seam ripper along the line and serrate it a little more. But you have the short stitches, so it should tear away pretty easy. Now, I usually use leave the foundation paper on until I'm ready to sew the units to something else because sometimes with foundation piecing you're going to have bias edges on the edge rather than straighter grain. Because we cut the triangles, these should be pretty straight, so you can go ahead and take off your paper if you want to. I'm going to leave it for now so that you can see it on the demo board in person. Now for me, my least favorite pa part about paper piecing is tearing away the paper at the end. So I'm going to show you another method where you don't stitch through the paper and you can just peel it off. To do, to do that method you need freezer paper sheets or just regular freezer paper. Um, so I have copied some of my foundations onto the freezer paper. Remember if you're putting it through a copier at home your shiny side needs to be up when you put it in the tray because it's going to print on what's down in the tray. So I'm going to trim my edges just like I did on the last piece. Okay, I have trimmed on my cutting line, so a quarter of an inch away from the stitching line. In this case, your life will be easier if you go ahead and pre-fold on all the stitching lines. And you can just use that index card again to do that. So just line up the card on the line, fold, and just do that all the way up and there's no point in watching me do that. I have folded on all my stitching lines. It just does make it want to roll a little bit, but you'll see it'll make life a little bit easier. I want to flip it over to the wrong side again. My first piece, as always, is wrong side against the paper. And because I have my seam line there, I can just line up the bottom with the foundation of the fabric. Now because it's freezer paper, if I press it, the fabric will stick to it. I didn't press it all the way across because once again we are going to go to this side and this is when those creases make life easier. Fold it over. 
add a quarter on both sides. Sorry if my hands are getting in the way. Okay, so now we are ready to go ahead and add our side pieces just like before. All the cutting is still the same. So I'm going to just line up my edges Double check to make sure it's going to go all the way to the edge. If I'm happy with it, I can pin it or I can just take it to the sewing machine and stitch. Now this is where things change a little bit. Because I'm not going to be stitching through the paper, I no longer need that really short stitch length. So I've gone a little bit longer. I'm going to fold my foundation back. I'm still using an open toe foot so that I can see. And I'm going to stitch right next to the paper. I'm not stitching through the paper anymore. So I fold it on the line that's between number one and number two. So you do want your folds to be accurate on those lines. Stitch across. And now I can open it up. And it looks pretty much like it did before. I'm just, I have not stitched through the paper. I have my paper folded back. Probably I'm going to have an accurate quarter inch right now. Put my add a quarter on. Check. It's good. So now I'm going to press this piece. I like to press my seams as sewn first and then over. And the freezer paper is going to hold that in place for you so it's not flopping around. I want to add my next piece. If you didn't pre-fold, then you're going to want to fold on that stitching line to make sure it's straight. And you can trim this tail off if you want to. I'm going to add my next piece, just like before. Double check to make sure it's going to cover the sides. That's the one mistake that gets made a lot in paper piecing, is not making sure your piece of fabric is big enough to cover. They should all be big enough because we pre-cut this time. I'm back at the sewing machine. I didn't cut that tail off. I will after. I have my pieces together, my pieces folded back. I'm stitching right next to the paper again. If you happen to just barely catch the paper, don't worry about it. You can tear it out later. I don't mean tear your stitches out, I mean tear the paper off. Like I just did there. You don't want to get too off though. Or you won't have your straight seams. So again, I'm going to trim, press. So I have the add a quarter on, butted up right next to the paper. Cut off any extra. I opened it out, move it to the pressing surface, open it up, and press. And again, I'm not pressing up here because I want to be able to peel that paper back and trim. So I'll flip it over, use your index card. Fold back on your stitching line. Add a quarter ruler. Slice it off. So you're just going to keep repeating, so just like last time, we're now going to add our next crease unit to the top. And as long as you're lined up with the cut edge, it should cover because we pre-cut these pieces. Again, fold back the paper and stitch right next to it. I finished piecing the flying geese unit using freezer paper and I trimmed it exactly the way I did the one where we actually stitched to the, through the paper. Now here's where the freezer paper is worth having. Since it's not stitched through anywhere, I can just grab a hold of it and peel it off and there's no 
threads catching in there. I don't have to pick any little pieces out. 